Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Humanities Festival and to this conversation uh, about power uh, of art to resist oppression with Marina Davidova. I'm particularly pleased to welcome her to Vienna. <coughs> Ma Marina Davidova is a well-known Russian theater critic. First of all, she's editor-in-chief of the theater magazine, the Russian theater magazine. She's founder and uh, artistic director of the New European Theater Festival in Moscow. Um, she, we will be talking about Kirill Serebrenikov a lot in this next hour, and she was one of the people who worked with him in the Gogol Center. Last but not least, Marina is also a theater creator, something that probably even the Viennese pu public who knows her as a theater artistic director for the Wiener Festwochen. Uh, she did the program of Wiener Festwochen in 2016. Uh, and just after that, she started doing her theater creations. Her performance uh, produced by Hebel am Ufer in Berlin just received a very important prize at the Bitte Festival in, in Belgrade. So welcome. We are very Thank pleased you. to have you here. <laughs> Today we are going to discuss a topic that is perhaps as old as art itself, and this is the relation between uh, political power and, and art. Well, art has this function to be a sort of a barometer of society. It is always through art that society learns about itself, learns about where it is going. Uh, but this is also why very often uh, art is uncomfortable for a certain type of power and certain type of regimes. Um, but it seems to me that the way power defines its relation to arts often tells us something about the nature of the regimes themselves. Um, in the case of Russia, there is a, a long history of oppression uh, against artists, writers, etc., going dating back to Tsarist times. Think Soviet of Dostoevsky, time. Soviet times. Think, think of Gulag yeah. and okay. Solzhenitsyn and until today, unfortunately. And if there is one paradigmatic case of um, artistic oppression in Russia today, this is the case of Kirill Serebrenikov. Kirill Serebrenikov is a theater director whom some of you might have seen his productions also in the framework of the Vienna Festival for three years ago, I think. It's in 15, in 2015. Yeah, in 2015. Just to say a few words of him, he is one of the most innovative and interesting young theater directors in Russia who in 2009 was entrusted to create a platform which was supposed to innovate Russian theater. This was the Medvedev times and there was this wind of change in the air at that point and he was the one who decided to create this platform where a lot of artists would create innovative art and will experiment. And um, this was back in 2009. Last year, 2017, he was uh, put under house arrest and he's still under house arrest. Yeah. So basically, from main innovator, he became main prisoner of Russian theater. But let us start with setting the scene, Marina. I would like us first to, um, for those who do not know the details, tell us a little bit about who is Kirill Serebrenikov, what is his place in the contemporary Russian performing arts scene, what were the accusations against him. Just to set up a scene, what are the other main characters in this story that we're going to look at? Uh, yeah. Um, mm, uh, Actually, Kirill uh, now is not just a director, of course. Uh, he is a kind of symbolical figure of new Russian theater. And, uh, and uh, Kirill Serebnikov's case is kind of lens or prisms through which you can uh, look at all the political, economical, uh, even aesthetical problems of um, modern Russia. Uh, uh, the, the, the case started uh, in um, May 17, uh, when uh, uh, people in masks, uh, they uh, surrounded Google Center, they raided it, and uh, 
all the actors, uh, they, they, they took the f cell phones from all the actors and they uh, were not allowed to, to leave the building and it, it lasted for the whole day and everybody in, in, in Google Center and in the whole theater world were absolutely frightened. Uh, because uh, people who just to say that the Gogol Center is Kirill Srebrenikov's the theatrical it's home. The theater which uh, Kirill uh, founded in uh, 2013, uh, 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 and uh, people which were just walking uh, uh, or be, uh, were next to to Gogol Center, they decided that it's uh, uh, like a uh, uh, bomb alert. That it's a t kind of terrorism. Uh, so already that time in May 17, everybody understood that it's not just a mm, uh, normal case of embezzlement, but it's a uh, it's a case which which uh, uh, had to to frighten all the people of theater world. Uh, um, it's not so so easy to answer why. Uh, Kirill became the main victim of, of all this process, but I, I tried to do it. There is uh, mm, the, the simple answer for, for a question why, why it happened with Kirill Serebrenikov and uh, his theater. Uh, you know maybe that um, uh, the main uh, figure of our opposition, the politician named Alexei Navalny, he started uh, like crusade against corruption in the high echelons of uh, uh, Russian authority uh, about some years ago. And uh, uh, our officials on all the levels, they, they like very much to give like mirror-like answer. Mm, for example, if uh, people gathered on the mm, squares uh, meetings against something wrong in political life, so immediately uh, other meetings named Putin's. So it's people who are supporting Put Putin. Yeah. Meetings against Putin. Uh, so they will be uh, arranged and a lot of people will be forced to come to, to these Putin's. If somebody started uh, uh, made dis disclosures in uh, in our authorities, so uh, blaming them uh, in corruption. So immediately uh, we need, I mean they need to find somebody, a symbolical figure uh, in liberal, um, uh, you know, opposition um, milieu uh, to blame for also for corruption or for embezzlement, doesn't matter. And uh, it, is, it, it was a kind of mirror-like answer to Navalny's uh, exposures to my mind. It's the first thing. Uh, another thing is, of course, that actually in, in uh, uh, Desi already mentioned it, uh, and I totally agree, uh, that uh, in about eight years ago, when the project platform started, and you have to understand that uh, the, this Google Center was uh, f established, founded in 2013, and before it, during three years, uh, Kirill uh, was running special, very special project, he, which he named Platform, and they were, uh, it, it was project uh, not about only about contemporary theater, but about contemporary music, contemporary dance, multimedia, and uh, there were a lot of exhibitions and so on and so on. It was a huge project, uh, which he started in uh, 2011, actually, not nine, but doesn't matter. Uh, and he started in, uh, when Dmitry Medvedev was our president. Uh, uh, a lot of people in Russia in, and in, in, in Western countries uh, think that there was n n there's no such a thing like Medvedev as a president, that he was just a special uh, um, representative on the throne instead of Putin, which is true. But at the same time, during his term, these four years between 2008 and 2012, we lived in a different, in, in, in a bit different country, uh, because because Medvedev, uh, he um, declared openly 
that he wants to, uh, to, to make westernization and modernization of all the aspects of uh, Russian life, including uh, economical, political, educational uh, aspects, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, they were, they, he made liberalization of business legislation. He uh, um, replaced uh, two years in, in, uh, in, in the army for one year. He uh, um, uh, changed our educational system and it became very close to Western educational system and uh, the, he made a lot of things. And uh, then he decided that he needs to do something for, for art field. It was like, like a natural continuation of this modernization trend. Uh, uh, I, I, I've heard that there is such a myth that Kirill, he uh, uh, um, with uh, a hat with in his hands, he came up to some officials and asked money for this platform to make uh, to make that big huge project about contemporary art. But this is not true. The paradox is that that time uh, the officials themselves came up to him and asked him to to make something. Uh, a kind of modernization in our artistic field because, uh, and it's also a very important thing, that theater is a very conservative um, uh, uh, structure in Russia. We have uh, practically all our theaters are, are state theaters. They are dependent on, on the state budget. It's a huge, big uh, buildings with a permanent team and it's so difficult to, to, to change anything in all our theaters. And it's not so easy to find a person who will be responsible for modernization in our theater because it's really very, very dangerous. Uh, it was that time. And but just yeah. just one uh, one question. Uh, I think it was not the only, the platform was not the only project like this. No. At that time, there was the Perm, perm yes, project, perm, the so-called uh, Perm big, Cultural big, Revolution, so to say. Another project, project for modernization uh, of the yes, Russian culture. Uh, it, uh, it's mostly, uh, it was mostly about contemporary art, uh, because as for theater, it's also started later. Uh, but it, it, it's why I, I underlined it, that in theater, it wasn't so easy to find the right person for modernization. And Kirill was a unique person. Why? He, uh, you know, I, I, maybe I have to say some words about his biography, or maybe... Tell us about his place in the Russian theater context. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just some, some, some words about him. He was born in Rostov-on-Don, it's a provincial city, and he graduated from the uh, Rostov-on-Don University Department of Physics and Mathematics. Which, uh, uh, and he uh, with honors, so he's a very good uh, mathematician. Uh, but he never graduated from a theater institute. Uh, for Western context, for Austria, for Germany, or for France, it's, it doesn't matter. You know, I, have, I, I know a lot of uh, directors which never studied in theater institutes. But in Russia, uh, it's also it's a very specific thing. Uh, in Russia, this uh, diploma of Theater directing is a kind of fetish, and if you don't have it, you you are not a director. You are a dilettante. So he never graduated from such an institute. Uh, he first started to be a, a filmmaker. He made a lot of documentary films, and he even uh, got an award as a filmmaker first, and then he he came to Moscow. And in Moscow at that time, the, the, the situation in theater was not so good. Uh, mostly, uh, the theaters, they, they, they ha had nothing to do with uh, new writing. They even cannot imagine that they uh, stage uh, a new play on this, uh, somewhere, especially in, a big, th in big theaters. They all, they, you can only find in the program the cl classical things, like Molière, Chekhov, Ibsen, and so on. But there were some uh, attempts to, to do it in the small stages. And uh, there was uh, such a guy which is, was running a very special 
partly independent institution, uh, Center of Dramaturgy and uh, something else. And he was looking at a director who, who will stage Vasily Sigarev's play Plasticine. Vasily Sigarev is also a very famous Russian playwright and film director. And uh, he, he wrote such a play. It's a play about, you know, very depressive provincial Russian city, about the teenager, teenager which lives in such a city. And there, is, there are a lot of obscene uh, episodes, a lot of very physiological things. And Russian stage is very chaste, you know. N normally, directors, they, they cannot even imagine that they can stage such, uh, such physiological thing on the stage. And uh, all the directors just refused to do it. But Serebrinkov, he, he was not a normal director. And he s said, yes, He was I a dilettante after yes, all. Yes, I can do it easily. I can uh, stage this contemporary, like, new writing. Uh, and maybe we can even now to see, can see the small episode from, it was his first uh, performance staged in Moscow, uh, Plasticine. And it is episode when uh, two teenagers, it is in a play, it's in a play. Two teenagers, they uh, came to, to cinema to see adult movie. And uh, he, it's a very, some, he, he's uh, watching something very erotical. And he, in, in, in a remark, we can uh, uh, read that they're joking off, uh, you know, they're joking in, 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 this, in cinema. And how can we present it on the stage? And uh, Serimko easily did all these things. Uh, so if you can start with like 20, 20, 50, I would say. Я там заведую. Давай. Ты чё, блин? Давай, Макс. 
Макси, че ты? Смотри. Ну, один разок, Макси, потом. Макси. Uh, for, for 2001, it was something absolutely unbelievable in Russian context. Yeah, um, so I think we got an idea about uh, Kirill Serebrnikov, the theatre innovator and the very talented theatre director. But tell us about Kirill Serebrnikov, the prisoner now. So what are the accusations? Uh, what is the story with this house arrest that he is in already for a year? And it's not only him. So tell us about that. Uh, it's uh, uh, accusation is um, is is very Kafkian uh, because uh, he um, is tried in uh, in uh, stealing all the money which state gave him and his team for this project platform. Uh, but uh, all of us, I mean, all the critics uh, know, and as an editor-in-chief, I made a special issue of, of, of my journal devoted to this platform, and we counted that there were, uh, uh, during three years, there were uh, 80 original, we, we found, just found, 80 original posters about 80 original events can you imagine during three years, which, which happened on, the, on this platform? Normal theater can do not more than, in, in Russia, uh, uh, four, three premieres in, 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 during the season, but there were so many events. Uh, uh, and, it's, it, and you can um, read articles about it, but, for example, when uh, they, uh, or, um, uh, during the court hearing, uh, the the um, in, in investigative committee, the investigators, they they tried to prove that that there were not such a performance like Midsummer Night Dream, for example. There was such a performance on platform. It's very very famous performance, and the paradox is that it's until now you can see it, because now you can see it uh, uh, in Google Center. It's I mean it's it was staged in uh, 2012, but. Until now, you, it exists. And the accusation is that and it was not produced. That you, they never did such a performance. Okay, uh, uh, answered uh, um, the, the, the lawyer. You, uh, and she brought a lot of reviews about this uh, performance. And the, the decision was, okay, but it, di it, 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 it doesn't prove that performance was really staged. Because maybe... This guy just uh, commissioned these reviews to a lot of critics and they wrote it, but they, they performed. How can you prove that you really did a such a performance? It's, you know, uh, if I was a playwright, if I were a playwright, I couldn't uh, invent such a <laughs> absurd things. Uh, uh, so, so the accusation is that he stole all the money and uh, all the attempts to... to, to Mm, to, to, to prove that there were really these events, it's, it, 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 they don't help us at the moment. Uh, uh, why they can do it? You know, there are a lot of um, things. First of all, our, uh, our system, this financial system for, for theater, financial legislation for theater, is made in such absurd way that if the manager uh, would follow all the letters of the law, he would never buy even to toilet paper for the theater. No, 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 not mentioning the, the costume, set design, and so on and so on. So, all the managers uh, in all the theaters, all over the country, all of them, we know it for sure, they have to break some rules. Otherwise, they uh, don't do anything at all. And it means that to all of them, any day, can come these investigators and start a process. And only uh, our authority can decide 
to whom uh, they have to come or not. And you know that this, uh, um, Russia is a very hypocritical country. We, uh, e all the officials on all the levels, they will uh, repeat as a mantra that they, we haven't got censorship in Russia. And that's true. Formally speaking, we haven't got any censorship. Everybody can do everything, everybody can write everything. But one day, to your manager, he, for example, I'm uh, an artistic director of NET Festival. I never sign any financial documents, but my, my manager, I have a like, exec, executive director. He, he signs a lot of them. So I know, as an artistic director, I know that if I do something wrong, not me, but this guy will go to prison. And can you imagine what is it? It's even uh, worse than in so during Soviet time. But during Soviet time, for example, Yuri Lubimov, he uh, staged the performance, and some officials came and said to him, look, you have to cancel this th third episode in the performance. You have to cut some things, this red banner to remove from the performance, and uh, then you can do, or we, uh, your performance is forbidden. So he took a risk with his performance and him himself, not more. But now, yeah, uh, and even me, I, I, I think I'm rather, rather, like, rather, rather brave uh, person, but when I know that not only me, but somebody else can be uh, uh, under risk, so I will think twice if I'd like to do something. In the case of Kirill Serebrnikov, there was also another person being imprisoned, and this is the manager of his uh, Google Center, right? Uh, Malobrotsky. Um, um, in order to understand better the mechanics of this um, oppression, uh, can you tell us a little bit about his case? Uh, not only Malabrotsky, there are five other, six other people, which five of them are arrested, and one uh, woman, she, she was abroad when the, this uh, process started, so she just never came back to, 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 to Moscow. And one of these people is Sonia Apfelbaum. She is former official from Minister of Culture. It's also a very interesting thing. She also arrested. Just it was special agreement between her, uh, Gog, uh, Serebnikov, and so on. And another guy is uh, Alexei Monabrovsky, which is a real hero of this uh, process because he was arrested. Uh, practically by chance. He worked for platform for three or four months. Practically he had nothing to do with this project, but then he became a direct, um, general manager of Google Center, and he was running it during three years. Then he, they, they had a quarrel with Kirill, and it was it's a very good thing for our investigative committee, because how the, the, they work? They need to have any um, um, evidences that there was something. So he, he, they arrested this Malabrotsky and being absolutely sure that he will witness against Kirill because they, their relationship was not so good. And, 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 and now he is a prisoner and he immediately he, he refused to do it. Uh, uh, and he, he is really a very tough guy. And they didn't expect he, he would be so, so tough. They, they were absolutely sure that they, it, it, they, the case will be very easy for them. Uh, now it's not so easy, but anyway, it doesn't mean anything because they, they, they can do what they really want to do. You know, there's no uh, such, such a thing like independent court in Russia. There's no such in, a thing. A judge, he, she or he, uh, they have the decision about hearing just before it started. It's, it's normal. It's normal practice for, 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 for Russia. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, the, there is such a, such a guy, a smaller, I'd like just you to know this name because he, he, he um, just by chance, he, he became a um, uh, figurant of this case. And uh, now he's also, he, he was in prison for eight months and he practically, it was, it could be another Sergei Magnitsky's case. He nearly died in, in, in our prison, and at the very last moment, we, we 
did a lot to, to release him and it, now he is also under house arrest. Before the start of the last theatrical season last year, you made this appeal to the theatres in Russia not to start the season in an Oman celebrative way, but somehow show solidarity with Kirill Serebrenikov. Mm -hmm. What was the effect of this initiative of yours? And in general, what can civil society do in Russia nowadays in order to help people like Kirill Serebrenikov? Uh, you know, there is civil society and there is theatre community. It's two bit different things because uh, a lot of people supported me and really they uh, tried to, to do and they come to the, they attend uh, court hearings which are a lot of them during the year. They write uh, letters, petitions and so on. But mostly they are not directors, set designers, um, even actors. They are critics, intellectuals, uh, sometimes uh, uh, um, uh, politicians from opposition um, side. Uh, as for uh, theater community, it's another case. You know, I told it already that theaters are dependent on the state in, in, in Russia. Even if you independent, you think that you are independent, you are uh, anyway are dependent. Even if you don't get one ruble from the state, but there is practically no such status without such a special subsidy. But anyway, you need to rent a building, and this building, even if uh, uh, doesn't belong to the state, but there is such things as running water, electricity, heating, and so on. And any day, they can just stop uh, running water, colonization in, in, in your building, Everything belongs to the state. So if you want to, 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 to run your theater business, you need to be very sh shy. You, you, need, you see? Uh, so it's a real, very, very special censorship. So theater people, they really were afraid to, to make statements against this process. Some of them did it, but normally they did it not openly, but with coming up to, there were some uh, very famous actors, for example, coming up to Putin in couloirs and asking for Kirill. It's the, the way how they dealing with this thing. Do you have a hypothesis? Why are they doing this? Is this Putin who is doing it? Is it another level of power? And what is the message that they want to send and to whom? Uh, I, I'm not sure, it's, it's, it's really, it's a question for me. I'm not sure that um, they ha when it, it started, they had a special goal. Of course, as a result of it, we have a um, community which is very frightened, and we have such a phenomenon as self-censorship. As, as I already tried to, 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 to tell you, when uh, you, actually they even don't need to, to start another case, like uh, Serebrenikov's case. It, the, the one case is enough, you know, to, 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 to make this self-censorship uh, thing. I, I know it uh, because of my own performance, because when I made it in, uh, um, in Berlin, and it was very successful. Uh, so some uh, Russian institutions started uh, to negotiate with Hebel Amufer about touring this performance to, to, to Moscow and to St. Petersburg. And during these negotiations, uh, Malabrotsky and, and Selimka were arrested. And they, so, so the negotiation immediately stopped. Immediately. You know? It's, it's how it works. Uh, 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 so, um, so why? Uh, why? Yeah. To send the message. Uh, yes. yes. So the, 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 the simplest message is just uh, be afraid of doing something wrong. And if you want to to, to
to continue your theater works, you cannot be part of the opposition, you cannot, and uh, you have to understand that Google Center, which Kirill founded, it was not just a theater, it very, was a very special theater, with uh, the, the activity uh, was there during 24 hours, not only performances, but a lot of round tables, discussions, um, lectures, and, uh, and it was practically special venue for our opposition, liberal opposition people. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to live like this, something uh, in, in other embezzlement will be found in, in, in your theater and so on. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's very obvious. But uh, I am personally me, I am not sure that, for example, Putin, he, I think he even didn't know such a name that time. Uh, somebody on another level started it. Uh, I, I suppose that it's our Minister of Culture, which is now is the real center of Russian fascism, Russian semi-fascism, you can call it as you wish, but it's the center of the very conservative forces. Our Minister of Culture, the officials from in there, on the one hand, they are connected to the very right wing of Russian Orthodox Church, and on the other hand, with the very right wing of uh, FSB. Because in, in FSB, there's also right, there is such a thing like right wing of FSB. Uh, so, uh, and they hated um, all these new trends in, in um, our cultural life and theater. Uh, not only, of course, Gogol Center and Kirill. Uh, uh, and they, they tried to, to close my journal, for example. There were a lot of, they tried to, 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 dis, to, to kill our very fam uh, famous festival, the Golden Mask. Uh, it's now, on, uh, maybe you even know, it's uh, the, 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 the main uh, Russian theater festival and uh, competition. Uh, uh, but as for Google Center, they, they hated it may, maybe more than something else. Uh, and I think they, that these conservative people, but I cannot name them, and nobody can do it at the moment, they, it's, they initiated, they yes, launched the, this process. And before we open uh, the floor for the, your questions, um, be, and because our title is The Power of Art to Resist Oppression, there is this fascinating story for me that while Kirill Serebrenikov is under arrest, he managed to produce a premiere of several performances. Uh -huh. So in, two, in September 2017, 17, this was a month after he was arrested, uh, there was Pushkin's Little tra Tragedies, little which premiered and Gogol Center. Then later on, there was this fascinating ballet, New Rev, which okay. premiered in Bolshoi Theater, directed Theater. by a prisoner <laughs> under house arrest, on which premiere the whole political elite and cultural elite was present, and it was met with a huge acclaim. Such a paradox. Tell us about this. Uh, first, yes, I have to say that um, if I were a Hollywood, Hollywood filmmaker, I would um, made a film about uh, Kirill, because can you imagine that peop a person under house arrest made a premiere in Google Center, dramatic premiere, then in Stuttgart there was another premiere of his opera production, uh, Hansel and Gretel. Then in Bolshoi Theater was a huge ballet named Nureyev, uh, and then he, he f finished his movie, Summer, Leto, uh, which was selected for f Festival du Khan, and it was included in the main program of Festival du Khan. He made the, all these things <laughs> being under house arrest. Uh, I can, uh, it's a, secret information, but I think that it's, it's possible to, 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 to tell it here. First of all, do you know what is house arrest in, in, in means in, in Russia? It means that you cannot communicate with uh, some, anybody in, in the world, only with your lawyer, and Kirill can communicate with his very old father. By the way, his mother died uh, during well, this year when he was under house arrest because he, she couldn't live with it. Uh, 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 and, um, 
And as for the little tragedies, uh, he started, uh, Kirill started to rehearse it in May 17, and he um, practically finished it, but, but he, he decided to, to continue it it's in September, as it's a normal process. Like in the beginning of season, we'll continue our rehearsals for 15 days, and in the middle of, uh, of September, there will be premiere. But in the very end of August, he was arrested. So, uh, he, uh, when he was arrested, he can uh, make one call. He called to the theater and he, he, he asked, please, it's, I ask you, I'm arrested now. Please, you have to, to finish my work, this little tragedies. And all the actors, which, which uh, love him, like he, he said, the God for them, he, he said, yes, we will do it. And then he, sta he made a uh, like thousand of remarks about what to do in, uh, like on the, during this third minute, this actor, Kukushkin, he has to stay three meters uh, left from the, uh, from meters uh, far from the left wing and stretching his hand to act, act uh, somebody to say such words and there was, should be such a soundtrack at this, at this moment. They got from him secretly through his to the lawyer, lawyer these uh, notes, like, like it's, it's a little pile of uh, papers. And they try to rehearse according to this. Uh, it's, it's really, it's a Hollywood movie. And sometimes they try to, to understand. I think that our master meant that we have to, like this. Then they secretly, they, uh, with his lawyers, he gave him the video of the rehearsals. And he made another 1,000 notes to this. And during 15 days, he made such a, uh, he, he finished the performance. And I have to say that it's, first of all, his one of his best performances. And it's one of the best performances in Russian theater at the moment. And it may be in not only Rush, in Russian. It, it's really brilliant, absolutely brilliant thing. As for Nureyev, it was another story because uh, it was ready in July 17 and it, uh, it, it was supposed to, to, to be premiered in the middle of July, but the, it was already obvious that something wrong about Kirill and the general manager of Bolshoi Theater, he decided to cancel the premiere. A lot of foreigners, a lot of foreign journalists, producers, and so on, because it's a performance about big Russian ballet star, Nur Rudolf Nureyev. They were going to come to, to, to Moscow for the premiere, and suddenly it was canceled. But then in December, so practically in half a year, they, when Kirill was already under house arrest, they decided to, to, to have it in Bolshoi. Why? You never know, actually. Uh, but uh, I think that it's, uh, it's a kind of mockery. Because can you imagine, you are, you, uh, this um, general manager of Bolshoi, Vladimir Urin, he asked investigative committee, please uh, let me uh, bring uh, Kirill to at least for one rehearsal of this Nureyev, because uh, uh, about 600 people are involved in it. Uh, including all the mus musicians, uh, dancers, performers, and lo there a lot of it's a huge performance. And how can I perform it if, if, uh, we, if we haven't got even one rehearsal? So, you know, without a director. But uh, uh, the investigative committee, uh, they, they didn't allow to, to come for Kirill to come for, for the rehearsals. In, in, in the end, there was a premiere, really, and a lot of people from this high levels of, of our authorities, of course, came to see it. And it, is, it doesn't mean that it's a, uh, it's a freedom of something. No, no, it's really mockery because just in a week or maybe in, two, in 10 days, there was a meeting of Putin and some um, cultural representatives, people from, from cultural field, and one of them, he asked uh, Putin, why you, we still have Kirill and the house arrest? And he said, but you know, it has nothing to do with his, with his art. Even a week ago, you can 
could see the, the Nureyev in Bolshoi. It had nothing, it has nothing to do with his art, only with financial misuse of money. So it's so hypocritical and they are lying all the time so you cannot <laughs> you, you know, catch them. So um, I turn the floor to you and to your questions after we try to present you the story of Kirill Serebrenikov, which moves between, as we heard, theater and absurd and Hollywood mm -hmm. movie, <laughs> and at the same time really shows probably the best case showing the power of art really to resist oppression. But uh, please raise your hands if you have a question. and. The mic Uh, I would like to know if, uh, is it possible to say in a general way, not only in this specific case, uh, would you say if, if an artist from Russia is invited to the Western world, to Western Europe or to America, wherever, he would have a, a better chance to be treated uh, in a more, uh, well, appropriate way, or wouldn't it help at all? Uh, yes, it's a very general question. Uh, I don't know. I cannot say that. Of course, as for me, I'm treated in a, in a better way because I cannot imagine that, uh, for example, me, I could uh, make my, my performance in Russia. I made it in Germany and, and I'm going to, to make another my performance also in Germany. Uh, um, but it depends. Uh, there are a lot of uh, directors in uh, in Russia which are absolutely happy with the situation because they are doing the right art. Because you know our aesthetic, our political issues are so um, in such a complicated way. They are connected to aesthetical ones. Uh, sometimes, if you do wrong art. You even don't need to make uh, any special political statements. You are an, uh, you are an enemy uh, because of your art, because you did it in a wrong way. It's, it's, um, just remember Merholt. Why he was arrested? Just imagine, he, he was absolutely, he was a Bolshevik. He has even a, like a gun with, with him. He, sometimes he has it with him. And uh, he, he openly uh, supported uh, Bolsheviks after the revolution, unlike uh, Konstantin Stanislavski. He has never supported Bolsheviks. But Stanislavski was made by Stalin an icon of Russian theater. But Merholt was uh, arrested and then killed. Because for, for, for Stalin, this aesthetical aspect was more, even more important sometimes than, than political one. But so, the way I understood your question is that whether international recognition of a theater director would help him not to be, not to be prosecuted it, it in the way. It was a question. It was a question. Oh, OK. But yeah. Uh, Kyrgyz Rebrenikov was here in Vienna. He was quite yes, internationally he recognized. Was very, he was absolutely internationally acclaimed. Uh, but uh, as I told, they needed a symbolical uh, figure. So this um, the fact that he was internationally acclaimed was also very important. It, yes, it's, it should be a person with, uh, well known not only in Russia, but... Uh, so in a way it's just the opposite you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't help, yeah. but rather harm. Um, further questions? Show. Um, Raise your hand if you have some. Um. Under such circumstances, is there any way emotionally to survive, or is it just a question when to leave? Uh, for him, for, for Kirill, it's a good question, of course. Uh, for me, <laughs> for me, uh, I'm fortunately I can travel and. Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I feel all the time, I feel this special pressure uh, and um, it's not so easy to leave as if there's not this, um, it's not dangerous for me to, 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 to write my articles, to, to, to run my journal. Of course, I understand it. Uh, um, but yes, I, 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 I used to it already. <laughs> 
is frankly speaking. But as for Kirill, I have to say that uh, he's a, he's a um, he's a real B Buddhist. He's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not just words. He's um, um, practicing it. He can meditation and so on, and it helps him. Thank you very much. This was uh, really very uh, interesting and revealing uh, what you told about the present situation in Russia. But nevertheless, I would like to ask once more, why does the Putin regime needs this? I don't understand. Oh. To be honest, I sometimes also don't understand, and uh, uh, but uh, mm, not all these things in in, in this dicta dictatorship uh, situation can be explained in a rational way. Just remember about this uh, Nazi, Nazi time. Why Hitler needed to 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 kill all the Jewish people? Can you? Answer this question? Yes. It's, it's a kind of irrational thing. It's a kind of irrational thing. And sometimes I see that some um, events in our life, I cannot uh, explain in, in, in a rational way, but I know that it's a very strong, strong hatred. This conservative uh, part of our society, uh, I sometimes I even I had a chance to communicate with these people uh, which told me about how awful is Kirill, his art, his Google scent and so on. And I asked them, uh, uh, have you ever been to Google Center? Have you seen any performance there? Ne no, never, never. Do you know personally Kirill? No. Why, why do you hate his art if you have never seen any? It's just they, they hate it, but it's real hatred, you know? It's, they, they, it's not an imitation. I just can't can feel it. And uh, I, I'm absolutely sure, I, I know that it's like a wrong answer, because everybody wants, I made a like, very simple uh, and uh, rational answer, but I think that the, the starting point for all these things is this irrational hatred to all the uh, all the modernization trends in our life. Uh, it's, yes, uh, all the attempts, and actually what happened with Kirill was a kind of backlash of this attempt of modernization of this art field and so on. Another thing is that not only our officials, our politicians, but even in the theater community, you can find a lot of people which hated him because he tried to do such, he practically he broke all the uh, unwritten Russian theater laws, you know? So it's really complicated situation. With, we, we can't find a conservative uh, trend, not only on the, this high level of authorities, but in all, uh, all the social stratas in theater, in educational system, in uh, everywhere, everywhere. And it's, it's, it's real problem of our society. Thank you. Um, I find it interesting how you defined um, uh, the, what is right in art, that state defining it in, uh, in uh, but state is also something that is not static, it's changing. So um, I am myself coming from a post-Soviet country and uh, I remember that very well, what was right uh, to be in yeah, art before. You can feel it, you know. Uh, yeah. But it changed, it changed yeah. with the generation, it changed with the uh, regime uh, who was in power. And my question is, um, do you see that change in Russia? Let's say even in the same uh, Ministry of Culture, I'm sure there should yeah. be some kind of change. And what kind of positive uh, change you would see or you would like to see? Uh, 
I think that in the beginning of this millennium, the, the, so many positive changes happened in Russian cultural and theater life. And uh, after Kirill, there were a lot of very talented, really talented people which uh, just appeared on, on our stage. Uh, and some uh, uh, theater life now in Russia is very intensive, really, and so on. And uh, it, it, mm, the, the, the sad thing is that the, it, the, the uh, like in, uh, on, on artistical mm, uh, terms, the, the, the theater life, it goes up, and then it's uh, like collapsed with the political turn, right turn, which happened in 2013, and then in 14, after annexation of Crimea, we practically we found ourselves in another country. I just remembered that it it was my God. Is is it is it my country? What's what's going on? It was a kind of madness which was going on, and uh, until 13, 14, some people, even in the Minister of Culture, they were different people. Absolutely, they were supporting all these new initiatives and so on. After then, they, it was absolutely different situation. I remember that all the documents in our Minister of Culture, in, if you read, for example, them in 2011, the, every second word will be innovation, modernization, new forms, and so on. And then the, the same officials, they were sitting and tried to rewrite all the, the to change innovation to tradition new forms to old forms, and so on and so on. So you know what happened. So now all these uh, new people, all these new trends, they, they, they couldn't disappear immediately. Of course, you can still find a, very, uh, a lot of interesting things, but all of them under pressure, and we, we, we are doing our things, and we understand that it's very dangerous to continue it. It's like this. One last quick question. What are your expectations for the case of Kirill Serebrnikov? Can you predict what's going to happen? And oh, I think also, that probably, is there anything that the international theater community or could do? I, I think do? that they, they don't care about this international theater community. It doesn't mean that we uh, don't need, uh, we, we have to do anything, but a lot of things, but, uh, and can, uh, nobody can predict now what will happen, really. I hope that uh, he will get so named um, uh, uh, suspended sentence, if you, if you know what, what, what it means. Suspend, and uh, after it, he, had, um, uh, he will need to, to spend some years in, in Russia. And then, yes. I think he he he, he will it, it, it's um, he will immigrate. I think I don't know I don't know, but um, maybe maybe I even I, I I don't want to 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 to, to say it, but but I I, am, I will not be so surprised if he, uh, he he goes to to jail really, I don't know, and nobody knows. Well, thank you very much, Marina Davidova, for this conversation. Uh, for th you, please check our program uh, till the end of the day. Don't miss the performance tonight of another Russian theater dramaturg and director, Ivan Veripaev, who immigrated, actually, already. He lives in Poland now, and the performance starts at uh, 7.30 tonight here in the Kuppelsaal in TU and enjoy the rest of the festival today and tomorrow. Thank you all.